Hello everyone, welcome again to Design Underground. I'm Rob, Design Eponymous Irving, and this is episode number 20 of Design Underground, which is pretty awesome. I do apologize for the recent outages. Uh, we're, we're back at you, and today, since it's the 20th episode, we're gonna show you how to use the Unreal Editor and build maps. We're gonna start with something very simple so you can get the basics down. If you wanna skip ahead to the advanced tutorial, well, that's probably not till next week. So, <laughs> good luck on that one. Uh, we're gonna start by making a new level. I'm already in the editor with our default level loaded up. Um, it's filled with power-ups and ships and things. It's where we test everything. But we're gonna start with a new level. When it asks you, you are going to choose empty level. You don't want any floors. This is descent after all. So, some basics about the editor. Left side is your selector for what things you're gonna place in the, in the level. At the bottom, you have the content browser, which is where you see all the pieces that you can place in the map. The middle is your viewport, and it starts out in the orthogonal view, which can be minimized, and you can see all of your different side and top views. We're gonna work in the orthogonal view for the most part. Now, there are three different placement modes that you can use. That's the W, E, and R keys. They match a menu up here at the top, so you have your select and translate, that's the W key. You have your select and rotate, that's the E key. And you have your select and scale, that's the R key. We don't use that one very much. When you are setting up a new level that you're going to play in our game, you want to set your grid snap, which shows how finely or coarsely you snap to the grid. When we are making descent levels, we set that to 500 units. That's a pretty large size, but our maps are very large scale. Uh, set your rotation grid snap. 45 is a good one to use for descent levels because though they are, most of our walls are at the right angles or, not, or 45 degree angles. Uh, and then the scale snap, we, I just leave it at 0.25. Not really that important for now. Now, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to place a floor because we're going to build a little room. Now, in our descent folders, there is an environment folder which has a descent subfolder, which has way down at the bottom a descent white box folder, and in there, there is a meshes folder. That's where I am right now. The meshes folder is where we keep all of the, the building blocks we use to build levels. So we'll create what we call a gray box or white box with these pieces to define the shape of the level, and then we can jump in right away and play in that level and see if it's fun, if it feels right, if it's too big, too small. And so we can make maps very quickly and test them and then hand them off to the artist to make them prettier. Now I can show you a few things about making them prettier while we're doing this, but that's probably gonna be in the advanced tutorial too. But first things first, let's place an object. Now one quick note on our descent puzzle pieces, our walls are for the most part single-sided polygons. Now, that doesn't seem to make sense to most people, but it just means you can only see them from one side. This is very important, because if you place something and it's invisible to you, well, it probably means that you're on the wrong side. So you can either rotate it or move, move it around. Uh, when you're building a map, you should always stay as close to the origin as possible. In our case, we want to build the map around the origin, because when the level first loads, the camera snaps briefly to that origin point, and you don't want them floating outside of your level when they, when they start the game. So let's go find a floor. Now you'll notice that all of these start with the letters SM, that is static mesh. We use a very consistent naming convention here for all of our pieces. Um, you'll notice that I just zoomed in and out. That's the scroll wheel on the mouse. Um, that was accidental, but hey, might as well learn that one too. Do, 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 do. So I need the SMWB room floor. And that is right up here. Wow, we have a lot of pieces now. I hadn't even realized how many pieces there were. And pause, 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 room, ramp, floor, check. You will click on the object you want and drag it directly into the level. Look at that, there's our floor. Now, in the perspective view, Q and, uh, w, Q and E are up and down in the perspective view if you're holding your right mouse button. So that's how you move around and you also use your W, A, S, and D to slide your camera. So I'm looking up above this. This is way above the grid, sometimes that's hard to see. So since I'm already in W move mode, I can just grab one of these arrows and it will move in that direction. When I drag my mouse. I now have it well below the origin point, which is where I want my floor. And it's snapping to the grid about where I want it. Now, first trick you want to learn when you're building rooms like this where you have wall and floor and ceiling pieces and you're going to have a lot of them. If you are in this W mode and you hold the Alt button, or the Alt key I should say, and then drag your mouse on one of these move arrows, it will duplicate your piece and slide it over. Snap it right next to the original piece. Look at that, now I have two floors. If I control click, 
I can select multiple objects at once if I can manage to do that through the grid, which I am over, so there we go. Now I have two selected. If I move over here, I'll drag those two. Wow, four floor pieces. It's that simple. You can very, very quickly build huge rooms and without any effort at all. You can also do this with the rotation tool. I'll show you that in just a minute when we build our walls. I'm going to put a couple more floor pieces down here, but I'm just going to do them one at a time now. And if, if you feel like you're moving too slowly in the editor because your level's getting really big, if you're holding the right button down and you mouse wheel up, it will speed up your movement. So now I'm going super fast, which is a little too fast. All right, I'll drag another floor there. Then we're going to go control click on all these floor pieces and widen our room to six, or three tiles wide. There we go. We have a nice, in this case, descent cubes. These are identified with descent cubes, which are 10 meter by 10 meter cubes. That is the size of a ship's collision sphere. Um, that, so these, each floor tile and wall tile and ceiling tile is built for the most part out of 20 by 20 pieces. So standard hallway size and descent was 20 meters by 20 meters, which is exactly what we've done. When you're building rooms, you want to determine how many ships you're going to accommodate in the room and scale accordingly. In, in a room like this that is actually technically six descent tiles wide, um, you probably could only accommodate a couple of ships fighting comfortably, depending on how vertical the room is. All right, let's put a wall on this room. And you have to figure out when you lay your first wall exactly what direction it's facing, because you won't see it <laughs> if it's facing the wrong direction. That's not a problem. Drag it in there. Oh, good. It's facing us. We did not mess this up too much. And how did I get a wall stuck in the middle of my floor? I will never know. Delete key works if you select an object. And notice as I'm building this level, it is populating all the names of the objects that I placed over here. So in this case, I have a nice wall tile that I want to get snapped over against my floor. So it's not close enough. Zoom. There we go. And... That's not in the right place. See, perspective is everything in this. There we go. That wall is now in the correct place. You can go up close to it and check it out. It does not look like it's snapping right. That means it's not. Well, that's just the black line. Okay, my bad. Let's quickly spread out these walls with the Alt key and dragging. And voila. Oh, I'm using the half wall. That's why it's looking so funky. That's not right. I'm overlapping them. How not to build maps correctly in Descent. Okay. There we go. Wall C is a very small wall. Notice these are 10 meter walls. They're half sized. So let's get the wall A because that's the right size wall. We'll put one of those up. Oh my goodness. Another thing you can do is when you're in the side grid modes, Let's go look at one of our side views, expand it. F will focus on the currently selected piece. We don't want that perspective because we're looking at it from the side, so let's look at this one and F on that too. And F, whoops, I unselected, my bad. So anytime you use the F key, it focuses immediately on the piece you're working with. Now, when you're in this mode, you can use your arrow keys to nudge by whatever your grid snap amount is to get your pieces positioned correctly. Now I look, you can see much better in this view that your wall is lining up correctly. If we go and look at it over here, we can check and see if it's lined up with the floor, which it does appear to be, but it's not lined up with the other wall piece. Let's see where we're missing. There, done. Now, as I told you earlier, when you're placing these pieces, you can use the rotate tool, that's your E. You notice that it shows you which direction you can rotate an object. In this particular case, I want to rotate it on, along this plane to get it around the corner and do another wall piece. Hold your Alt key again for duplication and then snap and rotate. W to move it again, put it here, and so on and so forth. All right, we're back and just like in a cooking show, we have a finished product. Well, not quite finished product. There are a couple more things we have to do in order to be able to play this as a descent level. Now it is kind of basic. It's just a room, not quite a cube. Got its floor, walls, ceiling, all done. But before we can play in the map, we need a light. So we go to the menu over on the left side, select lights. We're going to start with just a basic directional light because that's the easiest thing to use. It will just be in the middle of our room. Now right now I'm looking at the map in unlit mode. If you want to switch to lit mode, that's Alt-4. You'll notice that all the walls disappear because it's dark. But that's okay. 
We just needed the light in there so that you can see when you're moving around. Otherwise, it would be completely dark when you start the game. The other thing you need is you need a spawn point. Now, we have special spawn points in Descent because we need to be able to identify team names and team colors associated with the spawn points. So I'm going to actually go into the content browser here, go to the content folder and search for the spawn. And sure enough, there's a player spawn point. That's ours. Now, you'll notice that that's got a little tiny blue arrow on it that you can barely see. And that little tiny blue arrow shows which direction the player will be facing when he spawns. Don't put it in the middle of the floor. Put it above the floor. In fact, I'm going to go over here, and I'm just going to move it to the center of the map. So 0, 0, and 0. Perfect. All right, that's enough things that I should be able to fly around in this with a descent ship. However, there's one other thing you need to do, and that is in the level settings. You need the world settings, and you need to find set the game mode to default game mode. At that point, I can go up here and hit the little play button. I'm going to set it to one player for now. I don't need to test in multiplayer for this one. And I hit play. That spawns me in an official descent ship. And I can move around in my map just to test it out. So that's about all the time we have to teach you with map building today. But we'll be back with more of it next week on the next Design Underground. I'm Rob Irving. See you next time.